Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Quantum mechanics is one of the most successful theories of modern science. Chemists, physicists, material scientists, molecular biologists, and electrical engineers all use the framework to understand and predict the behavior of many electronic devices and other complex systems. No single set of theories has been put to the test in the modern world quite like quantum mechanics. These strange mathematical tools and theories appear to be telling us the truth about the world. Upon closer examination, however, quantum theory has a number of unsettling features and contradictory aspects that have made some physicists, one of them Albert Einstein, uncomfortable since the beginning. Entire generations of scientists were taught that the equations of quantum mechanics work only in one part of reality, the microscopic, while ceasing to be relevant in the other, the macroscopic. When things get large enough to see with the naked eye, kick out quantum mechanics and bring in Sir Isaac Newton and conventional mechanics. Why two so profoundly different ways of modeling the same reality, with no clear delineation between where the quantum world ends and the macro world begins? It's very inelegant and very unlike the universe. Not only that, in quantum mechanics, particles such as the electron have wave-like properties, while electromagnetic waves behave at times like particles. To believe this theory, one must abandon the notion that each particle has a definite location at all times. These counterintuitive aspects of the theory led many physicists, most notably Albert Einstein, to reject it, or at least regard it as incomplete. How could such a bizarre set of theories like quantum mechanics be proven right time after time? Quantum mechanics isn't wrong, but human intuition is certainly challenged by it. How could something be correct, but not make any sense? How do we come to terms with quantum mechanics? One of the most radical and important ideas in the history of physics was developed to address the contradictory and near incomprehensible implications of quantum mechanics. The many worlds interpretation asserts that multiple outcomes and futures do exist simultaneously. The theory implies all possible outcomes of quantum measurements are physically realized in some other world or universe. This fundamental piece of work, the foundation for the idea of parallel universes, came from an unknown graduate student who wrote just one paper before leaving academic life. Hugh Everett's story is one of the most fascinating tales in the history of science, and one of the most important in the development of quantum mechanics. Hugh Everett III was born in 1930 and raised in Washington, D.C. Everett's parents separated when he was young. He was initially raised by his mother, then by his father and stepmom from the age of seven. At age 12, Hugh wrote a letter to Albert Einstein asking him whether the universe was something random or unifying. Einstein responded as follows, Dear Hugh, there is no such thing like an irresistible force and an immovable body, but there seems to be a very stubborn boy who has forced his way victoriously through strange difficulties created by himself for this purpose. Sincerely yours, Albert Einstein. Around the same time Hugh Everett was growing up, quantum mechanics was really catching fire in the physics community. Werner Heisenberg was working as an assistant to Niels Bohr at the Bohr Institute in Copenhagen. This is where they helped originate and promote quantum mechanical theory to the scientific and academic community. If quantum mechanics was movies, Copenhagen would have been Hollywood, California, and this was the golden age. Bohr and Heisenberg also presented an overall understanding and set of philosophical implications of quantum mechanics, what came to be called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum theory. Bohr and Heisenberg, the chief architects of quantum mechanics, wanted to tell the world what they thought the discovery meant, what it said about the meaning of reality. They emphasized a sharp distinction or separation between the observer and the system being observed the observation or measurement process itself changing reality and reducing the quantum system to an observable or measurable state. I've never been a fan of the Schrodinger's cat metaphor, but that's the idea here. The cat is both dead and alive. 
the wave function allowing for both simultaneous possibilities. Until the moment the box is opened and the contents observed, only then does the wave function collapse into an observable quality. One might call this the mainstream theory. It's really still the mainstream explanation today. It was never a very satisfying set of ideas, but it really caught on. Like other physicists of his day, Hugh Everett was dissatisfied with these troubling implications of quantum mechanics. Hugh had difficulty accepting the Copenhagen interpretation, which was embraced by Niels Bohr and the other quantum pioneers. He didn't agree with their assumption that alternate potential outcomes somehow vanish instantly once a measurement is made. Hugh Everett started a graduate program in physics at Princeton in the 1950s under the mentorship of John Archibald Wheeler, who had been mentored by Niels Bohr himself, the godfather of the Copenhagen interpretation. Even as a graduate student, Everett was known to challenge his colleagues and the faculty, physicists across the Atlantic, as well as his own advisor, John Wheeler, a man with a royal status in the physics world. Hugh Everett's scientific career really launched one drunken night in 1954, after a slosh or two of sherry, as he recounted later. He and a couple of classmates were drinking and thinking up, as Everett put it, ridiculous things about the implications of quantum mechanics. During this session, Hugh Everett was struck with the basic idea behind the many worlds theory. And in the weeks that followed, he began developing it into a PhD dissertation. The many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is also called the relative state formulation or the Everett interpretation. Everett reasoned that a wave function merely appears to collapse from the vantage point of the observer. In reality, it continues to evolve, forever splitting into other wave functions, each branch becoming its own separate universe, with a copy of the observer in each one. Once formed, the branches cannot interact with each other, continuing to evolve independently. An observer can only experience one reality at a time, Everett argued, but all other possible realities were nonetheless fully realized in parallel universes. In many worlds, the subjective appearance of wave function collapse is explained by the mechanism of quantum decoherence. These parallel realities do exist, but they're separated and sequestered from one another. Everett addressed the measurement problem by merging the microscopic and macroscopic worlds. He made the observer an integral part of the system observed, introducing a universal wave function that links observers and objects as part of a single quantum mechanical system. He described the macroscopic world quantum mechanically and thought of large objects as existing in quantum superpositions as well. Breaking with accepted theories, he dispensed with the need for wave function collapse. Everett had solved the measurement problem but his solution was not in line with the mainstream. Many of the leaders of quantum mechanics, the founders, most notably Bohr and Heisenberg, had firmly agreed on just one interpretation of quantum mechanics, the Copenhagen interpretation. They were the authorities, and they saw quantum mechanics their way. Everett's Many Worlds interpretation received an overwhelmingly negative initial reception. Hugh's thesis advisor, John Wheeler, even made considerable effort to formulate the theory in a way that would be palatable to Bohr and the other scientists. Wheeler visited Copenhagen in 1956 to discuss it with him and convinced Hugh Everett to join the visit as well. Hugh Everett recounted his meeting with Bohr to discuss the idea, stating, that was hell, doomed from the beginning. Leon Rosenfeld, a close collaborator of Bohr said, with regard to Everett, Neither I nor even Niels Bohr could have any patience with him when he visited us in Copenhagen in order to sell us the hopelessly wrong ideas he had been encouraged most unwisely by Wheeler to develop. He was indescribably stupid and could not understand the simplest things in quantum mechanics. Bohr and his collaborators completely rejected the many worlds theory. Immediately after the meeting in Copenhagen, in the hotel room that evening, Everett decided to ignore Bohr, Heisenberg, and the others, to instead move forward from the defeat. In the hotel room that night, Hugh Everett was hit with another stroke of genius, with the idea for using Lagrange multipliers to solve military and civilian numerical optimization problems. 
Hugh would later turn this technology into his own lucrative company, leaving physics entirely to spend his career in the Pentagon. He later founded his own companies in defense analysis and also worked as a commercial consultant. Everett left academia after graduation in 1956, never to return, without even applying to a single position as a professor. Hugh Everett left Princeton in disgrace, and even the great John Wheeler eventually disavowed the theory. Everett's published paper soon slipped into obscurity. However, not total obscurity. The many worlds interpretation grew and maintained a cult following. When Everett met his future business partner, Donald Reisler, in 1973, he asked whether Reisler had read his 1957 paper. Oh my God, you're that Everett, the crazy one who wrote that insane paper, Reisler exclaimed. The two men ended up becoming good friends. As science has moved forward, the many worlds interpretation has been reconsidered and is now even currently favored by many top physicists. One of the MWI's strongest advocates is British physicist and quantum computing pioneer at the University of Oxford, David Deutsch. According to Deutsch, the single photon interference pattern observed in the double slit experiment can be explained by interference of photons in multiple universes. It's such an interesting idea. The many worlds interpretation continues to catch on the more we discover about the world. I just wish Hugh Everett could have been here to see how far his ideas would go. That's how it works sometimes in science and in life. You don't always get what you deserve in time to enjoy it. And science can be like any other institution, not always hospitable to new ideas, even if the ideas are perfectly correct. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.